<laughs> oh man, I love it. I am I absolutely love it, man. Like like honestly, I seriously have not been this excited and this thrilled about the Pirates. I would probably say since the offseason of 2014-15, man. Like, I'm not even kidding. I haven't seen the Pirates this good since I was finishing my first year of college. This is Steel Sermon in the house. It is Wednesday evening with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Link is in the description. Um, 14-3. Pirates absolutely just mollywop the Rockies and complete the three-game sweep in Denver. We're 12-7 and seven on the season. And in those three wins that we had against the, the Rockies, the Pirates outscored them by a total of 33-9. to nine. You heard that right. 33-9. To nine in three games. Basically, on average, we win a game eleven to three over these guys. And you know what? I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to hear. Well, it's just the Rockies, and they're one of the worst teams in baseball. And you know, Coors Field is a hitter's park. Well, here's the thing, okay? Number one, if you're going to Coors Field, you better be able to score some runs. And the Pirates, they had no problem with that this week. So obviously, we can score some runs. And we scored quite a bit of them this week. So don't give me that. And number two, for those people that say that, well, the Pirates still haven't played anybody, I got some news for you, okay? That's not true, first of all. Because, okay, you drop the opening series against the Reds in Cincinnati, who we play next. We got a four-game series with the Reds back at PNC Park this weekend. Okay? It's like week one of the NFL. Literally anything can happen on opening week. Just like how anything can happen in week one of the NFL. So you drop the opening series of the Reds. Okay, fine, whatever. Then you go to Fenway... And sweep the Boston Red Sox. Who are not terrible, but they're certainly not great. They're a very average team. But hey, how often do you hear of the Red Sox getting swept at Fenway? Does not happen often. So there you go with that. Like last year, when we went to L.A., and uh, swept the Dodgers. How often do you hear of the Dodgers getting swept at home? Let alone, how often do you hear of the Dodgers losing at home? Does not happen often. When it does, it is extremely rare. Anyway, you take two out of three against the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox, yes, they're off to a bad start. But when they're fully healthy, they're a pretty solid team. You take two out of three against them. And that's the series that we lost O'Neal Cruz for four months. And then we drop a series at home to the Astros, a.k.a. the defending champions, who have won two World Series since 2017 They've been to the ALCS every year since 2017, and they've won the AL West five out of the last six seasons. The Astros are off to a rough start as well, but you can never underestimate them. You can never sleep on them, even with Jose Altuve and Michael Brantley out. They're still a solid team. You drop two out of three to Houston. Okay, two blowout losses to them. I can live with that. It's not like we lost to a terrible team. You go to Bush and you split four games with the St. Louis Cardinals who have been the biggest pain in our rear end for the better part of the last 30 years 
And honestly, we should have probably taken three out of four against them if it wasn't for Derek Shelton putting in Will Crow in extra innings last Sunday. But you know what? I'll take a split. It's better than dropping three out of four to them, which we also could have done to them. But we split with St. Louis. And so far, the Rockies are the worst team that we've played. Okay? You go into Denver and you absolutely just destroy these guys. You win Monday night 14-3 as well. Like, literally, you could have watched an entire replay of Monday's game and you would not have even known the difference between Monday's game and this afternoon's game. You wouldn't have. Let me uh, let me pull up this box score real quick for Monday's game, okay? Listen to this. Key Brian Hayes Monday, two for four with a couple of singles, a sack fly, three RBIs, and scored a run on his own. Brian Reynolds, two for five, two singles, two RBIs, a run scored. McCutcheon, two for five, hit a solo homer. McCutcheon loves hitting at Coors Field. We all know that. He once had a game where he hit three home runs at Coors, and he hit another one today, another solo homer in the top of the second to make it six to nothing bucks. And he hit another one on Monday to open up the scoring. And he also had a single Monday night as well. Carlos Santana, two for five, a couple of singles, three RBIs. Connor Joe did go 0 for 3, but he walked in the second that manufactured a run. Rodolfo Castro, one for three with a double, got hit by a pitch, but he scored two runs. Mark Mathias. Mark Mathias. The vibe that Pirate fans are getting from this guy so far is that he's Josh Van Meter 2.0. All he did Monday night was go four for five with three singles, an RBI, and scored two runs. And he hit a double today that drove in a run. Wow. Wow. I mean, I don't think that he should be in the everyday lineup, but if he can be indispensable and he can produce like this when he's just on the, in the lineup, I'd have no problem with him being indispensable. I really wouldn't. G1 Bay Monday, one for three with a single, a stolen base, a sack bunt. Scored two runs, scored three runs, or uh, two RBIs and scored three runs. Austin Hedges, a single, a walk, a stolen base, an RBI, and scored two runs. Everybody in the lineup Monday night contributed in some way. And that's just how you identify yourself as a team which is what the Pirates are doing early on in this season. You're figuring out an identity in so many different ways. You know, you see it when you see stuff like Jack Sawinski hit three home runs. One on Monday night, two more on Tuesday night. I think it's safe to say that he may have broken out of his slump, and he also had a sack fly today as well. Jack Sawinski, you see it with him stepping up to the plate and contributing. You see it with the aggressive base running, as I just said. Jiwon Bay with the sack bunt, with the stolen base. Austin Hedges with the stolen base. You see it with that incredible... And, and I mean absolutely incredible play by Tupacino Marcano on Tuesday night where he scored on a wild pitch and avoided the tag at home plate. Basically stole home on a wild pitch. And you know, 
It all goes to this guy who I absolutely give the most criticism to on the Pirates. It's Derek Shelton. Derek Shelton is starting to work with these guys. And who knows? If the Pirates can keep this up by the time August hits, not even be, you know, 15 games over 500 or 10 games over 500, but just play like this, be a 500-ish team around August, a.k.a. the time O'Neill Cruz comes back, and he just keeps working with these guys, and he's not like, okay, Matthias, uh, I want you to hit this 442 feet to dead away center in Coors Field. Okay, Kutch, uh, I want you to, you know, steal second base when, you know, your legs aren't what they used to be. Okay, uh, Sawinski, I want you, you know, or maybe not Sawinski, but, you know, Connor Joe, I want you to, have power in your swing right there. You see stuff like that. Stop trying to jam in a straight line or a straight peg in a square hole. And so far with Derek Shelton, it seems like he's starting to get the idea and working with these guys. Today, like I said, Andrew McCutcheon, another RBI and another solo homer. Rodolfo Castro pounded one to right center field for a three-run homer. Connor Joe contributed. Carlos Santana contributed again. And again, Mark Mathias. Johan Oviedo, phenomenal outing once again. Only allowed a run in six innings, struck out six more. The pitching in this series was phenomenal as well. Even with old man Rich Hill Tuesday night, or uh, uh, Monday night rather. Rich Hill pitched a great game Monday night, despite giving up that homer to Chris Bryant. Vince Velezquez Tuesday night had a rough start, gave up three runs in the first inning. But you know what? He settled down, found his groove, kept his composure, and pitched a really solid game, and the bullpen backed him up, and David Bednar is now the league leader in saves. And I just mentioned Johan Oviedo. Phenomenal game for him again. And the offense, I think it's safe to say, gave him more than enough support to get that W. Wow, man. This team... This team has absolutely won me over so far. And you know what? You know what the best part is? I honestly don't see myself... I honestly don't foresee myself making any rages about this team this year. You want to know why? Because if there's anything I learned about getting angry on YouTube, it's that you can't get angry at your team if you don't have any expectations. And I came into the season with no expectations. I said we'd lose 97 games before the season began. At this rate, it looks like we might win 97 games, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. You know, I'm, I'm not like that. But the point is, you can't get mad if you don't have any expectations. The way I see it, no matter what happens, if the Pirates are, you know, do a repeat of like 2012 where we were first place in the division in the middle of summer and then we had that terrible August and September and missed the playoffs, even if that happens again to this team, I won't even get mad about it. You want to know why? Because that is an improvement considering this team lost 294 games in the last three full MLB seasons. This is improvement right here. They're finding an identity. And they are doing all the fundamentals correctly. And just think about it like this, guys. Is Andrew McCutcheon going to be here long term? No, probably not. 
I have literally no doubt in my mind that he's going to retire a Pirate. Is Carlos Santana going to be here long term? No, probably not. He's probably done after his contract with the Pirates. Is Austin Hedges going to be here long term? No, probably not. We're either going to keep him as a backup or another team's going to pick him up. With these three veterans that we got in the offseason, McCutcheon, Santana, and Hedges, do you want to know what they are? They are fill-ins and they are placeholders for the three following players who are down in the farm. Andy Rodriguez, Henry Davis, and... Wait, let's see. Andy Rodriguez, Henry Davis, and Tramel Sledge. Sorry, just had a little bit of a blank right there. I was thinking of Nick Gonzalez, but you get the point. Those are who they are holding the places for. Okay? Tramel Sledge, great power of first base. He's going to make a really good first baseman for us. Henry Davis, the guy's a catcher and an outfielder. He's going to be playing outfield, I foresee. And Andy Rodriguez, a great defensive catcher who complements Austin Hedges so well. And he's got real good pop in the bat as well. I foresee him being the everyday catcher. When those three get called up, look out. Because this team is winning games left and right, putting 14 runs on the board two out of three nights, or two out of three games, rather, with this team. Just imagine when we call the rest of the kids up, like Nick Gonzalez, like Travis Swaggerty, like uh, Henry Davis, like Tramel Sledge, like Mike Burroughs, like uh, Chandler Parsons, like Andy Rodriguez. Like, um, did I, if I said Bubba Chandler, him, um, it, it's, it's just going to be a, it's just going to be a real fun team to watch, man. And this is a fun team to watch right now. It really is. But like I said, I mean, for those people saying it's the Rockies, they stink, that's true, but they're so far the worst team that we've played. We've beat. Average, we've beaten below average to average teams, sure. But let me ask you this, for people that are saying that. Over the past three and a half seasons, I'm talking about the second half of 2019, when this when the Pirates went 4-24. and 24. I am not kidding. Four, they lost 24 out of 28 games to start the second half of 2019. Over the past three and a half seasons, how many of those teams would the Pirates have beaten? I can only name like two or three at the top of my head. The Reds, maybe the Marlins, maybe the Tigers. And that's it. Three teams at at the very most that I can think of at the top of my head that the Pirates would have beaten consistently over the past three or four over the past three and a half seasons. The point is, if you're a good team, you need to beat, yes, the teams that you need to beat to get to that next level. You know, teams like the Dodgers, teams like the Braves, teams like Milwaukee, teams like St. Louis, teams like Houston, the Yankees, you know, the big boys of baseball. But you also need to beat teams that you should beat. Colorado is a team that we should beat. And we most certainly did beat them. In my opinion, Boston is a beatable team. In my opinion, the White Sox are a beatable team. St. Louis, they're, this is the most beatable that I've seen St. Louis in a long time. And we split with them. I mean... I'm pretty sure, too, with us at 12 and 7, hey, man, I'm pretty sure the Dodgers would like to be 12 and 7. I'm pretty sure the Astros would like to be 12 and 7. I'm pretty sure Philadelphia would like to be 12 and 7. I'm especially sure St. Louis would like to be 12 and 7. I'm sure Boston would like to be 12 and 7. 
Who cares? Who cares if you go out there and play a crappy team? You go out there and you beat a team that you should beat. And that's what the Pirates are doing. They're playing like a good team. Now we go back home, play the Reds for four games. The Reds are a team that we should be able to beat. I don't expect us to sweep the Reds as much as I would love to sweep the Reds. To be 16-7, and 7, 23 games into the season. But realistically, I think it's reasonable to expect us to take 3 out of 4 against the Reds. Because they're not a good team. And they just got destroyed by Tampa Bay. Meanwhile, our bats are blazing hot right now. I think the Re- I think it is fair to expect that we should be able to beat this Reds team. It's just it, it's incredible, man. It really is. The Pirates are really putting a smile on my face right now early on in the season because they are definitely overachieving and it's just a thing of beauty to watch, man. It really is. You know, like I said, I I can't wait till uh, these kids get called up from the farm and they get their chance in the big leagues and they go up and they support this young cast that's already on the Pirates right now that's winning them games. It's just incredible, man. It really is. I'm so proud of this team, man. I have not been mad at them once. All season so far. I was a little annoyed with the opening series, but I wouldn't even say that I was mad. I was just annoyed with it. I wasn't even mad about the Houston series. And I I honestly wasn't even mad about the St. Louis series, other than the fact that their announcers are just straight up garbage. But that's besides the point. I love what this team is doing right now. And keep your foot on the throat, man. Playing simple. These guys are playing phenomenal so far. Anyway, let me know what you just think down in the comments below. This is Steel Sermon. Check it on out for the night. May God be with you all. Let's go Bucks, baby.